and our extraordinary editor producer Ron Mignoni. This microphone works a little bit. Yeah. You better turn off the other one. This is extraordinary. I yeah. mean, even when people beginning. like a movie, usually we lose half an audience. My this is wonderful. Yeah. This is really great. But I'd know. like to congratulate you. Yeah, I'll put the article uh, on Facebook. So this is a film interview, probably. that I think Not you may this. have figured out by now is a true story, a hundred percent true story, except the dialogue, obviously the specific dialogue. Uh, this happened to my father, um, who. 50 years after the story took place, uh, sorry, are you still moving things there? Um, told me this while I was tape recording different memories of his, which I did rather obsessively for 30 years. Um, and um, while, I, I, I don't know if it's in the program, but while, while he was telling me the story, he got to the part um, about, uh, he got to the, the part about um, that, that he had kept the ring for 10 or 12 or however year, number of years in the safe in London um, before the Blitz. And as he was saying that to me, and it was about 1.30 in the morning, my mother came in and said to my father, what are you doing still up talking to And She said to me, let your father go to sleep. <laughs> and he, sa she, he said, okay, I'll be in a minute. And she went back. And then he said to me very quietly um, that he kept the, that ring in uh -huh. his safe. And I suddenly realized, oh my god, I don't know if my mother knows this story. They've been married 50 years. They were married 60 years by the time. They died, and it suddenly occurred to me uh, that I don't know if, if her entire life, and they were, you know, happily married, she knew about this. So um, that's just a little footnote. Did, did he express any regret? Did you sense anything? No, my father didn't, was not a man who had regret. Um, he ex he expressed, you know, that he was extraordinarily. Um, surprised at himself for feeling so much. He had, he said this was the one story in his life that he didn't like. He would kill me that I made a movie out of it. <laughs> he really would kill me because he said this was the one, he was a rather proud man of his whole life and he accomplished quite a bit. And he said this was the one story he really didn't like because he felt he had done something wrong. This idea that he planned um, sleeping with her and then telling her, or he didn't miss, use, to me he word said, I will kiss the girl, <laughs> and then I'll tell her that I'm Jewish. Um, so, um, that, that's it. But I mean, the, the, the fact that she was sort of responsible for the death of his mother, you know, you wonder if that was not part of the story, had maybe would love have conquered would love a one out. It's would have, who knows? Uh, you know, yeah, the linkage isn't even clear that it was her. Um, so it was, it's suddenly implied, it suddenly seems that way. 
Um, but that's not the point. The point was uh, she was not going to stay with him once she found out anyway that he was a Jew because of the deepness of her anti-Semitism. But what he did in telling me the story was humanize bigotry in a way that I'd never had occurred to me. I've rarely seen a film that does that. Right. Yeah, it's, it's very it's, unusual. And, yeah, and it's, it's, it's a, extremely powerful. I mean, you can just sit back and relax. The juxtaposition. David, you said Michael. They can't hear you. You can't hear me? I didn't know. They can't hear you. They can't hear you. I don't believe you. You have to, who, 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 who has not been able to hear me? Okay, so the back. They can't hear you, Andrew. Okay, so now you can hear me. Um, so we're talking about the juxtaposition of bigotry and love, which is rarely seen on... Um, can I interrupt screen. for one minute? This performance. Oh, yeah. All right. Performance is not going to speak. Um, the extraordinary thing for me about this film is that we we did it as a play for a year. Could not afford to make it into a movie, and therefore, thanks to Ron Vignoni, my extraordinary editor, who came up with this ability to transform it from a play into a film because of what is now technologically possible, we were able to present, I don't know what, quite what to call it, it is a film, but it, it's no longer a play, but it is not quite like any other film, structurally, and I was very curious, I want to know how that worked, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Really, so there was not, that's great, there was not this comfort at the, fa the fact that it felt different from films, you know, it's funny because uh, David Mamet used to do these kind of films where you weren't sure exactly, you know, there were people in the background, but they really weren't there and there was a real focus on the real characters. So I thought it was unusual in that sense, but it fit the, the theme and the message. You really didn't want to see a waiter. We had no okay, interest good. in well, seeing any we, waiters we or a negative into or a anyone positive. else. We were only interested in the main characters. I mean, I'm speaking for myself. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions, I guess, is what we're supposed to say now? I'd love to hear anything <laughs> at all. Did you ever attempt to find out the fate of the nerves? That's a great question. The question was, if for those of you who didn't hear it, did I ever try to find out the fate of the nurse? Of course not. I had no way of finding out the fate of the nurse, but Tana came up with a great, great answer. She had to play this bigot. This was a very difficult thing for her to play. She had to play it night after night and say these terrible anti-Semitic things. Um, I don't know how she did it. She managed extraordinarily. And somebody talked to us, a, a, a Polish Jewish lady, after one of the screenings. And Tana came up with this answer and possible sequel, <laughs> which is that because of this experience, 10 years later when the uh, Germans occupied Poland and started slaughtering the Jews, that this girl, this nurse, hel helped save Jewish children. That she was one of those that are honored by Yad Vashem for about one of those about 20,000 poles. Now we're getting closer to Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. No, that's no there were these people. <laughs> right. There were these extraordinary right. people. But it, it would have been an incredible, I mean, but, but it's But I think it's logical that it this emotional been. experience, I want to go there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I applaud we, you for that. Why not? Because, yeah, it's, we, we look to film for redemption. But the only redemption possible, I think, mm -hmm. is the idea that this affected her so profoundly that when right. push came to shove and, and the worst happened, exactly. she, it, she was a hero in and, some And the sense. fact that the deepest human emotion, which is love, could lead to that, I think, is, says a yeah. lot. Yeah. How does this differ from some of your other terrific completely, films? Completely. I mean, is this a whole new experience There's for no you? relationship. Uh, uh, it's a different experience. It's sort of one of a kind. I did see 
she did see that I'm going to repeat what you're saying or, or you have to speak louder. That's him. Yeah. <laughs> Ron Vignoni. Yeah. Yeah. Before he talks about that, I want to say something. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about, he. I know nothing about technology. But from my history of making 20 films, I learned that when I went into post-production and the editing, if you wanted to change something, you could move in maybe uh, this much, you know, I don't know what to say on film terms, a, 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 a foot or two uh, to, uh, without, before it goes out of focus while you were editing it. Ron told me this amazing thing has changed because of a new technology and you could now <laughs> move all the way in across the stage uh, into the close-ups of the people and if you want to talk about that I'm not sure I, well I, I, I couldn't start this without saying one thing and that is the genesis of this comes from a sign that's hanging on our cutting room wall from oh. a dear friend of Henry's Orson Welles and it says the enemy of art is the absence of limitations which basically means you know instead of throwing money at a situation to fix it, come up with a creative solution. You take the problem and make that into an opportunity. And that really was the impetus for us to break this film out or to reappropriate um, the message and the thematic that Henry had so brilliantly crafted. And so we started taking the negative space, which is the black behind the great performances, and ornamenting it. And as we ornamented it in this abstract way, it started to become a living organism that was part and partial of the film. And it just went from there. It was like ornamenting a tree, ornamenting you know, uh, the narrative in ways that fit. And to your point, yes, you can do lots of things digitally that you can't do in film. Um, and there's some limitations too. And we worked with those and tried everything. It was a real... Uh, handcrafted thing that we, you know, we went on this journey together, and there it is. Until I felt the last like, moment, by the way. Until the last moment. That's in, the, sure. in the first half of the <laughs> film, Henry, I felt like the train was like a, a living character in the film. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, it was inherent. Just, was there any scenes that were more difficult than others? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean. Yes, there there was definitely, uh, especially during the the take. I mean, always the the um, the story of the of my character's father. There were two. The 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 one of my character's father. Um, Am I wrong that she's too close to the mic yes, now? She is. She oh, is. Sorry. No. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, my char the 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 scene of my character's father. I mean, this this the whole role. This was the the most difficult role that I've played since um, ever on the stage um, and just embodying uh, the I don't want to say hatred because in order to, to really grasp um, an honesty with this character um, I really had to believe um, in the love ultimately and flip the switch of, of the whole in, entire character and really believe in her love for her father who died and then therefore from the root of love from there go into the hatred of the other which in this case was the jewish people um but it was it was really really hard for me the whole way in, t in terms of running a play and having to 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 carry this sort of hatred i i ended up during the run of this show running um <laughs> two and a half marathons in a two-month time period and like falling and I wouldn't I would just wake up at like three in order to 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 get through like the emotional um, sort of dress of the character and I would I would I actually fell off the stage a couple times just <laughs> while I was doing the play and then just got up and kept going 
but but after like even after filming this this uh, the scene with the father here, I remember I ran into the bathroom and like threw up because it was just it's just a lot and I didn't expect it to be that difficult um, to to embody hatred. Well, you were embodying hatred and you were embodying love for this man at the same time, and you were going back and That's forth. I don't recall seeing that. I've never often. seen. I've never seen it in anything, yeah. and, and I think that's what makes what's unique in her performance. Of course, allowed us to both feel somehow, while she's her horrible for her, and therefore be able to believe that he could have the dual response that he has. Right, and then and then what I found the deepest scene of all was when uh, you find out how his mother died, and you're like uh. completely humbled because now the hatred for the Jew is connected to the, the trauma of your lover's mother's death. How, do, how was that? That was a piece of cake. <laughs> another no, marathon. Yeah, another marathon. Um, no, that was, that, was, that was really difficult too. And, and it just and and I think the other thing about this is is the fact that it was a true story. Um, this isn't exactly on point with the question you just asked, but but the fact that there were so many um, unanswered and unwritten characters like this and un, unwritten and unanswered uh, love stories throughout history that got caught up in politics or got caught up in the other, but had a viable point from both sides, and then got caught up in hatred or love and that, that um, just just being on the opposite end of a character that existed which was Henry's father and then being this unwritten woman and and knowing toward the end of that that, that my character was going nowhere that there she was unwritten and doing that for, for a, a year too that was it was it was like where do where do people go? It's it's kind of tragic. You know, Henry, one thing I, I notice is usually when you have these kind of films, especially in Israel, you have filmed a Jew who falls in love with a Palestinian and so forth, you know from the beginning <laughs> there's a Jew and a Palestinian. You know, whereas it, what made this film, I think, really unique is that you just, the characters don't know. I mean, he knew, but you didn't. So I think that sort of kept the real suspense. Just happened to be a true story. And, and it was a true story. story. Well, that's, exactly. of course, what's astonishing. Right. Um, is there a question in the corner? Boy, well, my father would be hating this so much. I, oh, you never know. No, no, I know. I knew my know. No, no, my father died at 96. He, he hadn't changed oh. a bit. He, I, I know exactly how this kind of thing, he wouldn't get what we're getting. You know, he just unfortunately. What would he hate? And my mother, ironically, would have loved it. What, what would somebody ask in the audience, what would he hate? What would he have hated about? He would have hated it because he felt it showed the worst thing he felt he had ever done in his life. The manipulation. But n it's not just manipulation, yes, but yes, but the determination to actually have sex with a girl and then tell her something that he knew would would have this effect. Um, it, it just not wasn't in his character. Um, so to, uh, he just could, he could not understand my attraction to the story. And it was re he was reluctant. I got it twice on tape over the years, actually. Um, and um, no, he would have hated the exposure of this. Uh, so, so in his mind, do you think there was no thought that she might be redeemed and he, they would end up together? No. Okay. Oh, oh, you mean no, 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 no. In real life. Oh no, in real life, you know, he absolutely, he simply decided he would get even with this vicious anti-Semitic mm. girl by making her like fall in love with him mm, okay. and then ha having sexual relations with clearly a very virginal uh, innocent you know and then telling her a devas this devastating because it's interesting when he speaks to the to the doctor yeah he doesn't really share that with him it looks well, like I, he's I made up the doctor gotcha so I have no idea what you know yeah. uh, I just made up that character because we needed some of that you information did. you did um, uh, he's not here which I'm sorry the, that actor is not wonderful actor didn't come so I'm sorry there's a gentleman right there did your father uh, oh you I said the gentleman right there I did 
Did your father love her right or there. just pretend to love her? The question is, did my father love her or just pretend to love her? And that is what he told, when he told the story, that was what was so interesting. He told it as if he had done this thing that he wasn't proud of, but, you know, I didn't get the feeling that he loved her. Until he said, you know, after she, my mother had come into the room and told him it was time to go to bed. And what she went, you know, I, and he told me in this low voice, I kept that ring for 10 years in my office safe in London until the blitz destroyed, the, you know. Why else would he have kept the ring? Obviously, he felt all this love. And, um, uh, you know, what I just always have been dying to know is whether my mother knew any of this. Sorry. Be because I thought how profound it was that he was the embodiment of the man who killed her father, and she was the, the embodiment, right. and maybe the woman who killed his mother. Right. Do you want to repeat that you for know, a minute? And yeah. And yet, and yet, he was the embodiment of the man who killed her father, and she was the embodiment of the woman who killed his mother. That is so profound that I would love to claim intention. <laughs> and from now on, Will, Rabbi Levy, Rabbi Levy has identified a symmetry of biblical proportions. But God bless him for that idea. But, but it's interesting that a rabbi would come up with this, Stan, because um, I had not put it that way in my brain, and it, it's really profoundly true. They do represent each one of them. That is fascinating to me. And not, I would love to claim intention there. You know, and then... And because I don't think it's a happy Hollywood ending. You think about people like Irina Dutkaj, who was a Polish Catholic nurse who rescued Jews during the Holocaust. Do you hear? Is everybody able to hear this? No. no. Catholic social worker. Who Would, can we repeat? He said that as a result of this, you think about people like those great people who are honored by Yad Vashem, like Irina. Who's Abdai? Sadler. Oh, I don't know who you're talking about. Righteous Gentiles. Here in Los Angeles? Oh, yeah. here. After the war. Oh, I didn't know that. What? But it's not Updike. You can't have a name Updike. Yeah. Well, that, that was her husband's name. She married. But anyway, she was a nurse, and she was the head housekeeper of the Nazi official responsible for... She was a nurse and the head housekeeper of the Nazi official responsible for... The annihilation of the, the, Jews, annihilation in town, of the Jews in his town. And she hid Jews in that house. Yeah, wow. those stories are all astonishing. Those people, the, uh, it's breathtaking that those humans existed. It's the only thing we have to hold on to, actually. In the corner, all the way? No, that's you. Yeah. Go ahead. You know the history of anti-Semitism in Poland is long before 1933. Um, uh, it was already in the 20s. Uh, laws were passed. No, I said the biggest one. I didn't the say biggest, it started at all. Okay. okay. We don't have to debate this. Uh, that, that has nothing to do with the intention of, of, of the film. But what I find fascinating, Henry, is that really just thinking back now, any time Hollywood has touched these subjects, you always end up with the classic happy ending and the righteous Gentile that ends up saving the Jews, which is wonderful. But what I really like about this is that you just follow the story to the end. It's and it didn't story. have a happy yeah. ending. In our imagination, we can wish that the woman might be redeemed and end up saving Jews, yeah. and that's a nice but thing we to don't. have. Of course we don't. But we don't know, so I think there's something sort of authentic that I... I hope to. It's a real yeah. story. It's a yeah. true story. Yeah. That I, yeah. I like. Yes, sir? I, I haven't seen the play, first time seeing the movie, but I thought it was very focused. I was very immersed in the characters. There was less distraction the way it was done. He was very immersed by the you characters. Know, there was rest, less distraction because, because of the it was, way it was done. The way it was done. That's you know, great. And there wasn't this big scoring of musical accompaniment right. that goes with it. Oh, it's good either, music, though. You're either with it or not yeah. with it. And I was totally focused. And um, okay. That means anything. Who's got a question? Yes.
the symbolism of the train going through the tunnel. Uh, Ron? Symbolism? Well, I, you know, it's not about the symbolism as much as it was about the, 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 the rise in the conversation and the peak of where it was. And at, at an emotional point where something could break or fall apart, we accentuated it there with a train and also the convention of a tunnel because it was, you know, the suspension of disbelief is they're on a train and that's what we did. Yeah, but let's not go too far and make up, uh, you know, it's, it's very nice, but there was no, in, where are Not you? Symbolism. Uh, there was no symbolic intention uh, whatsoever. I, I have to ask you, Henry, Yeah. totally separate note, uh, your next project coming up, we're very interested. Uh, what are you working on? <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. She said, we just finished this last night. <laughs> Seriously, you really finished this last night? Ask me, yeah. in, a, in, ask me a few weeks from now. Okay, I'm trying to give you a plug. All right, a couple more questions. Yes, what, Scott Jacobs in, in from the, YouTube. Thank you. In, in the way that you create... YouTube? Is that a yeah. natural... YouTube, it's a true story. There's a thing called YouTube. Yeah. There's a thing called Jew Anything. So you can Google that. Jew Anything. So in, in the way that you... Uh, you created the the character of the doctor. Did you also create the character of the boss, or the, or the business partner, Jewish business partner of her father? Or is that is that Emmis? That's a very good. That's a very good question. Uh, for those of you who didn't hear it, he's asking, did I create like I created the character of the doctor? Did I create the the, the story about the? Um, um, the business partner. The business, business partner. partner uh, the reason for her anti-Semitism. No, I did not. Uh, yes, I created that. Uh, the, I never. He didn't tell me that that happened at all. Um, but one knows enough about bigotry that one creates a rationale for what certain things. And you heard those stories forever from bigots. They have an example in their history, frequently familial. So, in real life, no. That That's story right. about her telling it about the, right. the okay. ring is true. So he he could have. The ring is. Let sure, me finish, right. oh, yeah. please. Okay. The ring is true. She, he, she got the ring from her father, and she did put it on his. Exactly that. But I created where I thought the anti Semitism came from. Okay. Did you create him to be religious? As a statement of anti-religiousness, on on I, from from your perspective, I did not create him to be religious. Or she means the partner, the, 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 the his business partner. Yeah. You, you said he was a, he was a Hasidic yid. Oh, yeah. why, why did I make him a religious uh, yes. A Hasid? Yes, yes. <laughs> You'd have to examine my side. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we love honesty. Uh, uh, I think those. Jews who had all those external characteristics, identifying them as Jews, uh, were easier to fo for bigots to focus their bigotry on, um, find the distance from, um, and um, I, I think I recognize in myself a certain bigotry toward those people, toward um, ultra-religious. Um, I think many of them are bigoted themselves, um, and um, uh, and I I know that my own feeling of that uh, made it quite simple to explain that that would be his char the character rather than a more integrated Jewish character. But you know, again, I've never examined my psychological reasons. Uh -huh, but by doing that, you realize that you gave her kind of an out. I gave you her can, an in, not an out. I gave you, her an explanation that bigots always have some kind of explanation. Uh, they don't just have bigotry. No, but in her case, it was legitimate if her father really did get screwed by this man. But we've just... No, not really. Right, it was to it's, rationalize it's, her not, it's not legitimate because you get uh, screwed by somebody who's Irish that for the rest of your life you had the Irish. No, I don't believe that. Anyway, uh, again, I invented... 
I invented that. That's right. Thank you. But, you know. Okay, one more. Yes. Oh, more than one more. But <laughs> ten more, we're here at midnight. Okay, you're next. Did your father tell you other stories that you yeah. share? My father told me so many other stories that you would be here for a few years and I'm not going to bore you with them. He was a great storyteller. But, but this was the one story. Next story. This was the one story that he was not proud of. Everything else were stories about his accomplishments. <laughs> because he ran the economy of Danzig for about four, six years, even under the, the Germans came to him in London and tried to get him to come back and continue. And they offered him honorary Aryanship. Do you know about that? Wow. Yeah. When, when he said he was leaving, and he gave them 12 months notice in Danzig, and then he was gonna go to London because the atmosphere, the, 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 the Jews, the, the Danzig was not was an independent state. It's too much to try to explain. He gave them notice that he was he had to leave, and they said, and he went to London, and they sent emissaries to London to get him to come back, and they got an offer from Berlin, um, and that's the as vague as it gets, uh, to make him and him and his family to make us honorary Aryans. And that was one of the things he said that made them leave much faster. Because what he said, that when they want to make you an honorary what you're not, it's not good to be there as what you are. And he used to tell me that, always that story about, because the point was about owning what you are and not having any fantasies about that. Yes. Where are you going with this film? Where am I going with this film? It'll be opening. Tell the whole world about it. Oh, you're very nice. It, 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 of course, we. Uh, uh, I don't know. It depends. <laughs> we, we're looking. We're not sure if we're going to distribute it. I've been distributing my films myself. I think this needs a special kind of handling. I'm not sure. We've had a few offers, and we're looking for for others. We might get a distrib distributor other than ourselves. This look. This is literally not only the first showing. We had no intention of showing it yet. <laughs> You know, uh, I, I got a phone call from, who was it? Hillary. Hillary right there, <laughs> who can't speak right now, so I can take advantage of that. Um, <laughs> she's hoarse. Um, uh, I got a phone call from her inviting the film. I don't quite even know where you got the information about the, I call, oh, I called, she said, you called me? So, I, I, no, I didn't suggest, is the film, would you like my film for the, for the Jewish Film Festival? She pushed him. We're, her voice is coming I, back. I don't even think I knew about it. Okay. So, okay, anyway, uh, we, we do not yet uh, know about our plans for distribution. We, but we've never shown it to anybody outside of 10 people at our little uh, office screening room. You know, we've never shown it. So this is a wonderful first experience for all of us. There, she's had so... Yes. The wonderful actor who plays him as a young man tells the audience at the very beginning, uh, to, to, speaks to them about this experience and then ends speaking of him. I, but I had this great footage of him, but it wasn't about that, but I had a great soundtrack about him from tape, so I made it look like he's telling us this story. Henry, is there anything from the play to the movie that you changed in the film, in the transition? Uh, except that superstructure which we're, that we're discussing That's now. It. No, Anything nothing else? else? No. Nope. Nope. What else was in that vault? What were those papers about? The writings in the vault? Uh, you know, we, we just used the, uh, an image of some, some piece oh, of so paper. I have no, but he said, because he says on the audio tape, I had in that, I had this letter from my grandfather in Russia uh, and a few other valuable things, you know, so. Oh, okay. Did you all know that that was me as a baby at the end picking up? And could you see, this is, and, and could you see, I need to know this, could you see that, it, that the baby, the little me, picks up what is a movie camera? That registers? No, not to everybody, I see some faces. Yes, pretty much? Great, 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 great. great. Elisa Wiseman. Because right. it was so out of character for him to mislead this woman 
Right. Now, when he was... Not just to mislead her, but to then right. sexually, all of that. Exactly. But when he was a prisoner, he did what he had to do because his life depended on him. Yeah. Correct? Right. The, so the story about his being in prison in, in Russia is absolutely true. Being imprisoned as a capitalist and what he did to get out by, by slowly going along with being persuaded that communism was a good thing. That's all true, 100% true. assume that would normally be outside of his character, but for his own survival, that's what he did as a, as a prisoner. Right. Because he didn't have the right to do that. Right. So Revenge? I, I, do have any, I have no idea what you mean. What would be the basis for his stepping out of character? You mean with the woman? With the woman, yes. Well, I think you were mentioning revenge. The basis revenge. is that, that she said this disgusting thing about what being able Jews? to smell a Jew a kilometer away, and he wanted to get even. Payback. He also said he loved Payback. Payback. But he fell <laughs> He fell in love. That's what's astonishing. He never says to me, by the way, that he fell in love. Lust? He just, he just no, not at all about right. lust. He uh, just... He just then said this thing about, you know, I kept that ring in the in my vault in London for in the office safe, and 12 years later, you know, then you realize the impact that this had. It's a whole mix of emotions here, because on the one hand, he falls in love. On the other hand, he also wants to, to get pay even. back, yeah. get even, yeah. and then... He yeah, has the duality with of that, her that that makes it interesting. I think really that complex. Here. He felt that complexity. Yeah, but he didn't like it in himself that he yeah. acted on it. And I thought it was great right. that he acted on it. So, at the end, yes. You're next. Yeah. For the film, but uh, not that much because it was so. Uh, it was just a little bit uh, more for camera because. But but not that much because it was only a 99 seat house, so every single night was um, so it's a very personal space already. Um, but I want to say something. I don't agree at all. We <laughs> shot it. We shot it first um, from the back of the theater with the audience, and we had that performance, and uh, then we shot it again without an audience. With you know, and the difference in the performance was profound because she gives, when there's a live audience, um, a, a different kind of energy, and it felt false on some of it on film, as good as it was on stage. Um, and uh, that's why we shot it again, the whole thing, uh, without an audience, and these wonderful actors just <laughs> took it down to reality. But there was, that's a great question, by the way, you know, and that's an important, remember, how, how we tried to struggle to make that other that other film uh, come down, and I think we use certain things from that takes, not in the end, not not in the end at all. No. Oh, so we didn't. Yeah, it's so a we, different medium. Yep, it is a different medium. Uh, if ever I ever learned that, it's this one. So, so did you? Is this film actually a film of the stage play minus the audience with some other added effects? Because how did the train work in the play? I love your question because it shows we succeeded beyond our wildest dreams. I want to be honest with this audience, what's left of it, um, the good diehards that are still here. Well, the answer is no. What? No what? Yeah, no, no, it is not. It is not the same. We shot it. I, I thought I explained that with it, without an audience. We first shot it from the back of the theater during a play, during a play and right. the performance was different. Was too big for film. No, no, but the stage set is what you would use in the play. The stage set is what we used in the play, and then did our best to obliterate okay. through the technology and the wonderful skills of Ron Vignoni. <laughs> on the film to try to replace it with filmic elements, okay. create a new kind of environment. And it was filmed without an audience. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, All right. Yes, sir. One of the, uh, <coughs> I decided to do in black and white. I wanted to present something to Henry that um, was very close to what was going on there. And so 
we kind of we came up with a formula, if you will, which you know the way the director of photography used to shoot back in those days with stockings in front of the lenses and lots of diffusion, and so we came up with our own digital formula that appro that approximated or looked like the films of the 30s. So it's not just black and white. You can't just get this by going take the color away. This is a a, a, a formula. It's a it's a it's a it's a soup of things that is applied to every single shot to create this sort of patina and look. That's it. I, I wanted to say too to... into that period through that, you could almost, and the way the actors look. Yeah. He's saying the immersion of the period and the way the actors look all made us feel like it was... Leslie Howard. Leslie Howard, yes. 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 For the actors, too, the, the, the way that Henry writes uh, plays, and um, even though his films are, are um, for the most part, improvisational, well, half improvisational, his cadence in which he writes are almost, and if you see like 45 minutes from Broadway, are almost um, very 40s. It's like um, you, 45 minutes is kind of you can't take it with you. This is almost brief encounter slash um, it's sort of meeting some sort of historical piece during the 30s or uh, late 20s, 30s, early 40s. And even as the actors, it was like, okay, how do we make this interesting? Because it's almost like you're doing, we, we were having to include so much information about Gdansk and Poland and, and make sure all we, we were getting all this, um, uh, all this um, background information in about the historical period um, in with our, you know, and trying to remain jovial and interesting at the same time, which is kind of interesting. But I don't think um, putting it onto screen and doing it, utilizing that particular, um, the dialogue, it would have been the same if it were in color. Um, and even, you know, because in the feel as, as actors, um, we were kind of considering ourselves as, as though we were in a, a 40s film being like, ha, 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 this is a dance, and I'm going to get some sugar at the next stop. And then, you don't say, you know, but you kind of had to give yourself over to that a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, I thought. I don't, think yeah, I think you're right. Way in color. Especially the train scene. There was something very 40s, yeah. very, you know, well, you know that came out of the, con the dialogue between the four. And we had, a, uh, to be honest, a question difference. of necessity. We had shot it in color, shot it, in and it didn't look quite right. And I have been obsessed with films from the yeah. 30s and 40s, and uh, what's the Noel Coward uh, great uh, brief encounter, and the look of all of that. and. Um, uh, you know, it, it was just right. It clearly was right to do this. I also way. noticed, you know, for a Jewish film, there was no food at all. Every time they went for dinner, all you saw was either a scotch or a tea. You know, it was very liquid. The, the, I didn't the, see one piece of chicken from <laughs> any of these dinners. The and, you know, we're Jews. We're waiting. We're, for the um, I, I don't know what that says about me but or anybody, but um, the truth, again, is really simply, we shot a play, yeah. right. and in the play, sort of you have to efficiently sort of move things around. Yeah. And I was very concerned that in the film you'd feel the absence of all of that. I was happy you didn't bring and out the food. It would have uh, so uh, distracted. Uh, 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 <laughs> you know, I'm asking, what kind of chicken is that? Did he actually, is this really roast beef and stuff? Like I don't know how much that's about you or yeah, about our Jewish, our Jewish yeah. heritage. Sephardic thing. Yes, the, in the blue shirt. You haven't asked the question yet. Guy moving back and forth. There, if you look at the window, yes, it's a poster character. Yes, you will see that there is a man way, way out in the snow. Oh my God! Wow. There is? Really? Wow! <laughs> oh, we got a digital oh. editor oh. in the corner here. Who's moving like in a loop? And you can then, you can then you can see it's the same shot. You yeah, you take a look at it. You'll 
this. Oh right? my God, Th Ron. This is the <laughs> very first time we're seeing it ourselves on <laughs> screen this big. That, that's why. It doesn't matter. That's we know what the no, section he's talking amazing. about. That's that's. <laughs> I have some problems with that scene, by the way, not having background. <laughs> <laughs> I visually. That's the only note. That's the only. This is the first time I'm seeing yeah, it. We're editing it tonight. You understand? It's the first time I'm seeing it on a big screen. He's been working his ass off, you know, at the at the laboratory to to make it so good and available. But that's the only scene, and I know very specifically what I what, what so I. Thank you. The question was. It's a great. That's a great observation. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. We didn't, I didn't notice it. Did you put the priest there to represent the Catholic Church? Did I put the priest there to represent the Catholic Church? There is no question that Catholic, that Polish Catholicism contributed to Polish anti-Semitism or that Catholicism contributed to anti-Semitism. It started the in the middle. Yes. The answer is yes. But he was really there. We he said he was really there. He was, a, he was true in the story. Who, 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 who? Hold on, excuse me, I'm, fin I'm answering somebody. Oh, I did, so we're crossing. Sorry. Two seconds. Um, there was a priest. Yes. I, I have no information about that priest other than I created every aspect of him. Except my father had said a priest oh. to the lieutenant in the army, which I cut out, another and a, and a woman, and I made her an actress. But it was the priest who invited him in in real life. It was the priest. Ah, you're right. Who invited him in in real life? Because I have him saying that on tape. Oh, I forgot. Oh, did we make that up? No. no, no, no. That's no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Where was the train footage from, and where was the ski footage from? Where was the train footage and the ski footage? It's a secret. We can't, we can't reveal that. Oh, okay. but I'm sorry, really, that is a special <laughs> big bear information. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I would like to thank you for a great performance and your work. And I can say that... My great I, performance? No. no I said all oh, hers. <laughs> great performance thank and you. your work. And I saw the, the footage of the Zakopane train station. And I can confirm this is Sakopana train station because I drank there a lot of vodka each year for the head. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. That's what I'm even saying. Okay. Let's count the over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.